Hello and welcome everyone to our Savvy Ladies Wednesday Wisdom Webinar. I'm Maggie Montemuro and I'm the Marketing Coordinator at Savvy Ladies. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the chat box. If you're joining us by phone, please email your question to info at SavvyLadies.org. Today's presenter is Arian Hunter, Career and Business Coach for Purpose Driven Women. Arian has 10 years of professional experience in marketing, entrepreneurship, research and analysis, and visual arts. She leads the initiative, Project She Went For Her Dreams, which mobilizes and empowers women through real conversations about discovering and building their dreams. As a career coach, Arian strongly believes that self-awareness, mindset, passion, and purpose are the necessary ingredients to lasting success in one's career and personal life. Thank you so much for joining us today, Arian, and let's get started. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maggie, for that warm welcome. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. Uh, so for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to get talking about money in a very personal and intimate way. So while we won't get into our IRAs or investment strategies, <laughs> we will talk about some of the most common blocks to making money, where they come from, and how to alleviate them. So welcome to Mastering Your Money Mindset, Inviting Wealth into Your Life and Career. Money is a topic that is so fascinating to me, and I believe, so I believe it's so important when it comes to living with more freedom and purpose within your life and work. Uh, in the last in the last few years of growing my own business and becoming my own entrepreneur, uh, my relationship with money has changed by leaps and bounds. I'm not a millionaire by any means, but I've learned to redefine how I truly see money and what has truly changed my earning potential. So for today's call, I only ask that you come with an open mind and be willing to experiment with some of the concepts um, in your own life, okay? So today's objective, we'll be talking about airing out our money stories, um, relearning a new money, money paradigm and shifting our thinking around it, and how to create new empowering practices of building, uh, building money and wealth into our lives. Okay, so I want to start off with my money story. So um, growing up um, in my household, money was not often talked about. Uh, money was like this elusive, mysterious thing that I knew kind of caused trouble um, because I would often see my parents fighting over it. And, you know, money was also synonymous with this sense of struggle because it was always hard to come by and you had to work really hard to get it. So these are some of the, the, the takeaways that I had around money um, growing up. So naturally going into my adult life, I brought the following three beliefs about money with me. So what I learned about money was that it was never talked about. You just never bring it up. It was a private matter, right? It was often never talked about. Um, money was synonymous with struggle. It created conflict. And yeah, it was just nothing uh, good about it. <laughs> so the greatest aha I had um, in, in coming to my money story was, you know, exactly everything that I learned growing up was exactly how I started to manage my money um, into my adult life. Um, and it showed up as clear as day when I began my business four years ago. I began to see struggle and conflict and would often ignore it like it didn't exist. So of course, this is a recipe for, for disaster. So I knew I needed to do something quick. Um, so I'll share a little bit uh, later on on how I shifted that paradigm around my money story. Um, but basically, uh, what I took from that, what I took from my, my childhood upbringing around money is that history does repeat itself. Some of the lessons that we learn based on our childhood, based on our experiences, repeat itself into our adulthood. Um, what you know creates your reality, right? So if you know of a certain experience around money growing up, chances are that's what you're going to know into your adult life and that's what's going to create your reality or create you know the the um, experiences around money so your money often follows you throughout your adulthood so i want to talk about some of the more common um, money beliefs that we hear today right 
So the reason why I talk, I want to focus about uh, our beliefs first and foremost is because what we believe about something is how we tend to live our lives. It's how we tend to make our decisions. It's how we create the experiences in our lives. It's our values. It's what's important to us. It all comes from our belief system. Um, in short, our beliefs drive all the moving parts of our lives, right? So our beliefs are created from the experiences that we've had, right? So, you know, anything from childhood, the things that we've experienced, we experienced, the things that we've learned, the lessons we've learned, what people have often told us, you know, all create our belief system to who we are, which is a really key piece of our identity, who we are. So the point is, we often don't get to choose what we believe in. It's usually done for us, especially when we're, when we're um, in our childhood. So there comes a time when we need to choose whether or not those beliefs are currently working for us. So some of the beliefs you may have heard about money when you were a child are now becoming your beliefs as an adult. So some of the more common beliefs around money we hear is money is the root of all evil. Money is power, right? Money is in everything. Money is no object, right? These are some often sometimes the beliefs that we hear, um, whether in our household or in our society. Um, some other beliefs we might have heard growing up is money doesn't grow on trees, right? How many of us have heard that growing up? So I want you all to take a moment and, and check in to see how often did you hear any of these beliefs I have lifted, uh, listed here, or you know, how familiar do these beliefs sound to you? All right. So I want to get into uh, a little exercise, a little money mindset exercise, right? So I want to take a minute or two um, for you to just jot down what your top money beliefs are that you heard growing up as a child, right? If you have a piece of paper nearby or just if you don't, that's okay, just think it through. Um, take a moment or two to write down what your top money beliefs are, okay? Sometimes it's hard to come up with the beliefs right off the top of your head. So try thinking of an earliest um, money memory, right? From your childhood, what you learned from that. Your money beliefs often can be buried there. All right, so I'm going to give you a moment or two to think about that for a moment. Okay, great. A few more moments to think those through. Great. So our beliefs can be very subconscious. So it may be hard to articulate them right away, but it's important to spend a little bit of time thinking through these to get clear on what they are and how they continue to affect you today. All right. And as you continue to think about um, some of the beliefs that you may have gained through throughout your childhood and throughout your life, um, some more questions to consider is this, right? Take a look at some of these questions. Um, does money cause you discomfort? And that's today, here in the here and now, not as a child, but who you are today. Does money cause you discomfort? Right? Are you satisfied with your life as it stands today? Right? And what sentence best describes how you feel about wealth? Okay. So take these questions into consideration as you kind of reflect on what your top money beliefs are, okay? And we'll talk a little bit and reflect on these as we move through our talk today, all right? So what is money anyway, right? What the heck is it? <laughs> we interact with it just about every day, right? It's green, it's a piece of paper, right? It's something that touches virtually every aspect of our lives, right? What is money? Sometimes it causes us pain, i.e. when we're, I don't know, paying back taxes, or sometimes it causes us joy. For those who've ever won the lotto or unexpectedly come into some money, right? 
So why is it that money is such a strong emotional trigger for us? All right. So really what money is, it's a system, right? It's a system whereby we all live from, right? It's a system where we trade value for value. That's it, right? In the, in the beginning, money was created as a system, right? It's, it's as simple as that. It's something that we made up, that we created since the beginning of time. It was an exchange system to exchange our goods and services, right? It's, it was supposed to be a simple system, right? But because we are such complex creatures as humans and not at all simple when it comes to how we live and make our decisions, how we see money is through the filter of our beliefs, our emotions, and our perceptions, right? Our beliefs, our emotions, and our perceptions, right? The money is what it is on its own, right? It's when we attach our emotions and our beliefs to it and our perceptions that cause it to create our experiences or our relationship to it, right? So what often results from that is the actions we take around money and the habits we create, right? So what habits do we have around money, right? How do we interact with it? How do we see it, right? 95% of our actions are determined by our beliefs and our habits, right? It's so like I mentioned earlier, our beliefs are the driving force behind virtually everything that we do in our lives, right? So the important question becomes how much of our habits and our beliefs are unconscious, right? What are the habits that we are living by on a day-to-day -day basis that we don't even know are, 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 are registering? We're, we're not sort of understanding the decisions that we make. We're just sort of on autopilot, right? How much of those habits and the decisions that we make are unconscious and under the radar that control our actions every day, right? We're gonna start to bring some light to what those things are for us, what habits you know, are creating our reality for us, all right? So our unconscious money habits. Let's look at the way we spend, right? How much are we spending, how much of what we spend our money on is intentional and driven by conscious choices, right? We spend money every single day, right? Whether it's commuting costs, whether it's buying lunch, right? So how much of what we spend our money on are are, are actually conscious, are we aware of, right? So for example, spending lunch, uh, spending money on lunch, right? Rather than making meals at home, right? Um, buying drinks after work with our coworkers, even though you'd really rather be saving for that vacation to Italy you always wanted, right? So how much of what we do with our money comes from that conscious place of choice, right? Taking a look at the language we use around money. This is a big one. The communication, right? The words we use to describe and define our money experiences, right? So how often do you catch yourself saying, I'm broke or I can't afford that? You know, phrases like this often tend to roll off the tip of our tongue so easily, right? It's just how we talk about money, right? So we're actually developing a language around money right? Every time we talk about it. Um, it Maybe we find that our friends and our colleagues and our mentors and even our family um, have the same language around money. So you're often used to hearing the words, I'm broke or I can't afford that, right? So, but for a moment, think about the limitations of these words and how they make you feel when you say them, right? Not very good, right? So how does it make you feel when you tell yourself you can't afford it, right? This is coming from a real place within you that actually believes that you can't afford it. Whether it's true or not isn't the point, but it's about how it makes you feel, right? So it's understanding what the language is that you're using around money and how it makes you feel, right? Um, think about your attitude when receiving money or even giving it away, right? So paying bills or getting paid for the work that you're doing, right? How about when it comes to asking for money? What does that look like for you? What does that conversation um, look and sound like for you? Um, getting a raise at work or getting payment from a client, right? Do you cringe at the thought of even having that conversation, 
right? So what is your attitude around giving and receiving money? All crucial points that we, we need to start uh, paying attention to. These are the unconscious habits that create our money reality. Um, so these are the things that we need to start taking notice of. And the first step, the first step is to pay attention to your own unconscious habits, okay? So earlier we mentioned a little bit about perception and how perception creates the filter for what you see, right? So when it comes to lack versus abundance, right? So a lot of times we often see these phrases put together, right? Is it an abundant world or is it a lack world, right? The scarcity mindset, all of that, right? When it comes to abundance or lack, what do you see? And not necessarily when it comes to just your money, but in your everyday world, right? So some of the common things we most complain about are, you know, there's not enough time in the day. We never have enough time. We're busy, 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 right? There's not enough hours in the day to get everything done. That's already, we're creating sort of the scarcity mentality, this lack mentality, not enough time, right? When it comes to money, same thing. There's not enough of it. It's not enough to go around. We're going to run out of it. Um, you know, there, there's, there's just not enough, right? Even when it comes to love, right? Love and our relationships, right? Maybe we're not getting what we want from our partner or our spouse within our relationships, even with our friendships, right? We're not getting the, the thing that we truly desire. There's not enough of it, okay? When it comes to our confidence, right? What do you see there? When it comes to our skills, our talents and gifts, Maybe there's this question of, am I good enough, right? I know I can't be the only one that's ever asked myself that question before, right? You know, am I X or blank enough to do this? Or am I, you know, experienced enough to do this project? Or do I know enough here? Am I skilled enough? Da, da, da. The questions go on and on and on, right? But these questions come from this lack mentality, like that there is not enough. So when we start to inhabit this not enough perception across the board in our lives, what starts to happen is we create this dominating perception of lack. It's like, it's all we see, right? There's just simply not enough. And we learn to see the world as not enough in its resources, right? So what happens when that is the case? What is the cost of this mentality? What is the cost of this not enough mindset? Right. So what ends up happening is that our happiness suffers, our relationships suffer. We don't feel good about ourselves. We don't feel good in our personal well-being. So that suffers. Right. This creates stress in our lives that manifests physically, emotionally, mentally and touch all areas of our lives. We feel depleted. We feel drained. We feel exhausted, <laughs> um, you know, daily on a day to day basis. And we don't know why, right? It's because our energy is be de being depleted every single day, because we're constantly focusing on the not enough factor and not doing enough to replenish, right, to see more of an abundance, uh, prosperity within our lives, right? So this is often what I see happening. Um, we start it starts to our finances and that lack mind mindset starts to impact and touch other areas of our lives. You know, oftentimes we try to separate, separate our money from our relationships or our money from, you know, our joy and our, our passions and our creativity, but they're all connected. They're all connected. And when we can integrate all aspects of our lives from an abundance mindset, that's when things start to shift. That's when we start to shift this paradigm and start to see abundance around us, right? So bear with me. We're going to talk a little bit about what that shift would look like, okay? So what do we do about that? What do we do about this cost of not enough, that lack mindset, right? Well, the paradigm shift that came into my, into my life that changed everything was this. It was actually, it was a few things. Right. The first thing was when I realized that it's not about the money. It's not about the money. And it never was. Right. My problems or my challenges or my struggles with money, the problem wasn't the money. It was about my feelings and the beliefs that I attached to it. 
right? So two separate things here, right? Money on its own is nothing, right? It's just, it's a piece of paper, right? It's the value that we attach to it that dictates our interaction with it. So going back to my story of seeing uh, money as a struggle and as conflict, you know, that was the underlying problem. It wasn't about, about not making enough or not having enough, right? It was about that underlying problem of how I saw money, what I believed money to be, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's attacking it from the belief, right? Understanding what your beliefs are, what type of beliefs have you attached to your money that's creating your reality, right? So that was paradigm shift number one for me. Um, the other thing that was sort of an aha moment for, for me um, was knowing that, you know, our money story is, is deeply rooted to self-care, right? It's, it's, it's really about your self-worth, right? Your self-care, you know, what your values are, what is important to you, right? So going back to the earlier example I provided of buying drinks after work rather than saving for that trip to Italy, right? So in that, right? So in that transaction of, you know what, I'm going to go for drinks after work with my coworkers. I know I said I was going to be saving for this trip, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this, right? You're going against your values and what you deem as important, to you, right? So a lot of the times when we make decisions about money that goes against the things that we align ourselves with, that's where the disconnect happens. That's where we feel um, sort of this ickiness um, behind money is that we feel like we're powerless in how we spend it, right? We, maybe we're not aware of how we're spending it. So it seems to kind of just have its own life, right? And we have no control over it, right? So finding that your money story is deeply rooted to how you see yourself, your self-worth and how you value yourself, right? Is step number one. You come first. You are the one that holds all of the power when it comes to how you spend your money or how you experience your money. So basically what I'm trying to say here <laughs> is everything is a choice. When we recognize this, we take our power back instead of giving, away, giving it away every time we pay a bill or say that there is not enough, right? So how do we do that, right? Here are some new money practices that I found have worked wonders in my own life that I want to share with you, right? So, so step number one or point number one, start putting your money towards things that align with your values right things that inspire you and inspire a sense of abundance within you right so taking a step back to see how you feel when you're making your transactions throughout the day right and I actually want to suggest you try that on as a practice for the next 30 days right start to log what you are spending your money on right and this is not for budgeting purposes although that can work too but we want to get a sense of where are you spending your money where does it go right and how much of what you're spending your money on is actually in alignment with what you say you want all right so this doing this activity brings awareness to how you're spending your money and where what shifts that you need to make in order to become more in alignment with your money right ask yourself for every transaction that you make is this enhancing my life or depleting it right so when you pay bills for example right ask yourself that's an example right is this enhancing my life, right? Or is it depleting it, right? Paying for electricity, heat, food, right? All of these factors enhance our lives. They allow us to go on from day to day. They allow us to survive. They allow us to be happy and, and, and have that sense of security, the roof over our heads, right? Are all adding together to enhance our lives, right? So recognizing that when you make your transactions, asking yourself that simple question, does it enhance or does it deplete my, my life? right? Show up for your money. Talk about it, right? Take away any sort of shame or embarrassment there is around your money, right? Talk about it with a trusted partner, your mentor, anyone that you trust within your life to talk about your money. Talk about it, okay? 
you know, we're talking about it allows us to, you know, first of all, put attention to it and where we put our attention grows, right? So money loves your attention, right? Money does not like to be hidden or kept away as a, as a dirty little secret, right? It's like, how would you feel about, uh, you know, not being paid attention to? See your money the same way, right? Start to pay attention to your money. A daily ritual that you can start to do is every morning, right? Check your bank balances, check your account statements, right? And just check the numbers without judgment, right? You're just observing and checking in with yourself and with your money every single day, showing up for your money, right? Next point, watch your language. Watch your language around money, right? So no more I can't afford, no more I'm broke. All of those, those words, get them out of your vocabulary, right? Start to start to use words that create more of an empowering feeling for you. Like I choose not to buy this right now, or I choose to spend my money on this right now, right? Actively and consciously telling yourself that you are making a choice, right? And once you start to practice that, it brings back your power. You feel like you are more in control, right? Asking for money, ask, 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 learn to start asking for what you want. Now it doesn't have to be about money, but it does have to be for the things that you say you want, right? Sometimes we have a habit of convincing ourselves that um, to not ask for what we want. So sometimes we suffer in silence, right? Start by asking. You can start small and just ask for what you want. Make it a practice. And I know it feels uncomfortable, but stretch yourself to start small and start asking for the things that you say you want. You'd be surprised. That, you'd be surprised at the opening that you can create in your life just by asking. Okay. And with that said, I want to share a poem with you, um, inspired by uh, Napoleon Hill from his book *Think and Grow Rich*. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. For life is just an employer. She gives you what you ask. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn dismayed that any wage I would have asked of life, life would have willingly paid, right? So no matter what you want in life, you will get it, right? So if you don't think that you're worthy or you don't think that there is not, that there is enough to go around, that will be your experience. Life will give you exactly what you ask for, right? And you start to miss out on the opportunities that create abundance and prosperity in your life. Conversely, wanting and asking for more comes from a belief that there is more, that, this, that there is an abundance in this world and you are worthy of it. So why not ask, right? What do you have to lose, all right? So, and that wraps up our talk today. I wanna to thank you so much for listening and I'll take any questions you might have for me. Great, thanks, Arian. Uh, we had some questions come in and I'll start with this first one, which is, is it possible that I have no memory of how money was approached by my parents? I never remember any discussion about money. How can I figure out where the message came from? Ah, that's such a wonderful question. That's such a wonderful question. So, so that says to me that there may be a memory of money that you just may not be able to access yet. Um, the fact that it was not discussed in your household, it sounds a lot like how mine, uh, my story kind of went um, because money was not is talked about at all in my household. Um, so that may have created a money belief for you. Um, that may have created the belief of you know, we just don't talk about money. Maybe there is a shame associated with money. Um, maybe there is um, just sort of this embarrassment around money, even if there may not be anything to be embarrassed of, but you just don't talk about it. So chances are, if this wasn't a topic of discussion that you most commonly saw in your household growing up, um, that's a clue that perhaps there was this belief that it was just not talked about and you just ignore it, um, that, you know, it wasn't something that you often talked about um, or paid attention to. So I would start there. I would start there to see if there's any mystery um, behind money that could have created this belief for you. I hope that helps answer your question. Okay, yes, very helpful. And then our next question mm -hmm. is, how do you determine what your skill is worth? Mm. You know, honestly, what helps me, and that's such a tricky thing too, um, I would start with how it makes you feel. And I, I'm gonna assume that 
um, perhaps that question is coming from a, a business owner or entrepreneur that maybe wants to kind of price their skills or maybe equate a price um, to the work that they do. Um, I'll sort of answer it from that perspective. Um, for me, what has worked is starting with a price that makes you feel good, that makes you feel good. Um, you know, what, again, it goes back to your self perception, you know, um, what you perceive about your value and your skill may be completely different from how others perceive it, but that's okay. Um, you never want to devalue yourself or undercharge yourself or discount yourself at all. So if you're equating a price to your skill, make sure that it feels good to you so that when you receive money, you feel good about it and there's no resentment behind it. Um, feeling good about receiving money is also part of this equation as well. And you want to get fairly compensated for your skill. Um, and I would, I would even say sometimes we tend to um, undervalue ourselves, right? So start with a number that feels good to you, right? And don't be afraid to stretch yourself a little bit. Stretch that number a little bit. How would it feel to add 10% to that number? Right, because chances are you are worth that number. Uh, but sometimes we devalue ourselves; so it would stand in the way of getting um, paid for what we, you know, what we, what our skills are and what we deserve. So I would say start with where you feel good. Start with a number that feels good, and don't be afraid to stretch yourself higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And we had another question come in that says. What's your recommendation for an unpaid intern who is trying to shift the mindset to abundance, but actually is not earning a lot at the moment? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would shift the mindset by looking at abundance as not just money. Um, look for where you can provide value. Look for where you can provide value. Look for areas where you can give of your time, of your talent, right, of your capabilities, right? Okay, um, don't make it be about the money, you know, just because you're, unpa you're unpaid. I'm sure that you are still receiving a great deal from this internship. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't be doing it, right? So think about what you're receiving from that experience and think about how you can give the most value. Don't let it be about the money. Um, don't let the money or being unpaid stop you from bringing your a game treat that internship as if you were getting paid a million dollars okay um because at the end of the day it's it's not about the money it's it's where you can give the most value okay and that people recognize that you know people recognize that when you're doing work that you know your your heart's not really into it you know you're not getting paid so you don't really care about the work that you do people can feel that and it goes a long way and you don't want that to become your reputation right so don't let it be about the money give as much value as you possibly can and i guarantee you that will open up opportunities for you that's where you'll see your abundance come through mm -hmm. i hope okay. that helps yes great thank you and sure. i think we have time for another question Sure. Um, which is what strategies do you suggest when we hit a financial setback? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I personally believe that there's, there's always a lesson in everything. Um, there's always a lesson in every challenge. So whenever you hit a setback, try not to push through it, try not to freak out and try not to hit that fear button because that actually stops you from thinking clearly and rationally. And that invites all sorts of doubts and um, just unhelpful thoughts to kind of infiltrate and influence how you how you react to that to that setback. So when I, I say when you hit a financial sip, setback, use it as an opportunity to slow down to reset, survey what's going on in your life, right? What's working? What's not working? Oftentimes challenges give us this opportunity to do that. Um, a lot of times we don't take that opportunity. Sometimes we push through or we panic, right? But use this as a time for reflection. Um, use this as a time to really get real with yourself and, and look at what is working in your life and what's not. And I would invite you to, to not only just focus on your finances, but the overall picture, 
the overall picture, because as I mentioned earlier, our finances are connected to every and all aspects of our lives, right? So chances are, if a relationship is not working, it's going to affect your finances. If you don't feel good health-wise, it's going to affect your finances and vice versa. So I would suggest strongly to just t use that financial setback as an opportunity, reset, take a look at what's going on in your life, get real with yourself, see what's working and what's not working and, and assess from there and assess from there. Okay, great. Well, I think we're about out of time. So I wanna thank you again, Arian, for a very helpful presentation. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. Absolutely. Thanks to everyone who joined us today. We hope that you'll join us again. And I really think we can all get started on shifting our money mindset today and inviting wealth into our lives and careers. So thank Absolutely. you again so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Maggie. And um, thank you to all the listeners and for your wonderful questions. I hope to be in touch again soon. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.